just one single transaction, so 100 units um, for an error value, 11.80 million uh, naira. I I'm interested in fixed income. Let's go there. Let's see the uh, fixed income space, treasury bills and treasury uh, treasury bills and the bonds, the Naira paper. This is the bond market. Uh, you can see a short term paper maturing 29 June 2019, 1.70 billion. Look at the uh, remainder of the mid term papers 2021, 20, 20, 2027. 20, and those are the top four most actively traded uh, via the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange on Friday. Uh, then in total, you can see just about 6.7 billion uh, Naira after the mature treasury bills. On Friday, that's what you see. So let's talk about the, uh, the treasuries uh, for a, uh, a minute. Thank you. The most actively traded was the uh, 12th of October 2017 treasury bills at a discount high. Oh my, this is going higher, isn't it? 19.6%. Uh, Most of last week we were doing between 17 and 18%. Now, as we're getting uh, into uh, all the discussions about the treasury bills uh, being packed into uh, dollars by the uh, finance ministry and the DMO, then you can see uh, that's a bit of a up in the ante there for the treasury bills. 144.72 billion naira on Friday. The market is going to be kings. The SEC is going to be in the news all through this week. And, of course, the, media, the team were already in Lagos last week when the Securities and Exchange Commission says it has set up a joint committee with the company secretaries listed on the stock exchange to verify allegations of market malpractices. Monir Guazo is the head of the commission, and he has this to say in a very short interview. Let's listen to him. The main thrust of the meeting, like you say, is first of its kind, but it's in our effort of um, engagement, particularly to get all the support of the key stakeholders on the multiple accounts um, where people have bought shares either in their own names but um, with different names. So, for instance, Munir Haliru Gorzo, you also buy shares in the name of Munir Haliru. You probably also bought shares in the name of Munir Gorzo, uh, which are all the same person. But it's also an offense because uh, you both uh, multiple application. A multiple application is not allowed. Um, so there's also the incidence of people buying names in different, um, buying their own names and also completely in different names. Um, and that gives them an undue advantage over other people that actually bought those shares in their own names. And, and that's why we have a huge um, quantum of multiple applications in the market. And we have huge quantum shares that you cannot even ver verify. Um, and as a market, in our effort to tidy off our data, um, we set up a committee and they came with a recommendation by saying that for those that can actually come and justify that they're actually uh, the bona fide shareholders of those shares, um, we've given them a for forbearance from now to the end of December, they should come with concrete evidence, um, a KYC as provided by SEC under SEC rules and regulations, and once they can prove that, they should be able to claim uh, those investments. For those that bought those shares in different names completely, certainly there's no KYC that can support it, and so they will forfeit it completely, and the process we agree should go to the market development fund. Now, it's important to carry the shareholders along. It's also important to carry the company secretaries um, because those shares were created by the company and those dividends were also paid by the com company. So this meeting today look at those issues and we're able to get some insights on um, the way forward. Um, and we've incorporated members of the two or three members of the company secretary from different companies to also be members of that committee to do some finishing housekeeping exercise to make sure that all the loose ends are properly covered before end of this year. So it was very good. We also look at this issue of e-dividend. You know, we came up with a policy uh, with the directives that by end of December, um, there shouldn't be any issuance of a dividend warrant. And this thing has been in this market for the last 20, 30 years, and we keep on postponing the date. But we are committed to seeing that by January next year, dividends should be sent electronically. It is better for the retail investor because we've realized that the large quantum of unclaimed dividend in this market emanate from those dividends that are not being claimed by the retail shareholders. The high net worth individual, the institutional investors, certainly collect their dividends. It is the guy that is to collect 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 naira that is not able to do that. So we've also engaged them, tell them that they have to key in, and we also hear some of their concerns, and we have also allayed some of their fears. And that's why we have the NIPs and other stakeholders to also key into it. We also um, discuss this issue of um, 
um, penalties and trading of shares you know, outside the floor of the exchange. The law mandates that no public company's shares should be traded outside a recognized exchange. So we also employ on the company secretaries, those whose shares are not listed on exchange should also discuss with their counterparts and they should not be supporting trading of shares outside a regulated exchange. And um, all of them agreed to it. So it was a very good meeting um, for the multiple accounts. We also discussed about the issue of um, sending annual account electronically. Because we've realized that 99% of shareholders, particularly retail shareholders, don't get their annual account prior to the AGM. And the essence of having an annual account is for you to read, digest that annual account, attend an AGM, and ask questions. Ask the directors questions to explain why have they expanded so amount of money on social areas. And the only way you can do that is if you have time to look at those annual accounts. And like I said, 99% of those annual accounts are sent a month after the AGM. So we also had the discussions and look at the ways and means that those annual accounts can be sent electronically. We recognize that there could be some limitations. Some shareholders might not have an email. There could be a NEPA problem. There could be a network problem. So to alleviate that fear, we encourage shareholders to be registered with SEC. For now, we have data with respect to some shareholders associates for about 17. So we're giving them two weeks to tidy up the records. And if they do that, each company will now be mandated to supply some good number of copies to the shareholders associations, apart from sending it electronically. So if you cannot be able to access your annual account electronically, you should be able to go to the shareholders association, which are scattered all over the country, to have access to the annual account. So on one part, it's going to be a cost reduction for the company, and the more cost is being reduced by the company, the more the chances of paying better dividend to the shareholders. Two, it's also an advantage to the shareholder because that shareholder will be able to have access to those annual accounts. We've also told them that, uh, we've also mandated them to make sure that all annual accounts are also placed on their website. So once the account is being approved, it must be uh, posted on their website so that shareholders can take time and read. Quite a lot there to hear from uh, Munir Gulazo and the rest of his team in Lagos this week as we look at the market week. Let's come back to you after the break. Lagos is known for, uh, for being the economic and financial capital of Lagos. But of course, you've heard all the news about the refineries and Lagos discovering crude oil becoming an oil producing state and enjoying the derivation money. But it looks like the international community is interested in this business. This time is the battle for the refineries. <laughs>